Hi, I'm beginner clarinet students. I'm wanting to talk to you about what is called a sound to symbol approach. So we've been doing this without me talking to you about it because basically we found the sounds and then we learned about writing them down in music notation and then we and adding them to our fingering chart. So I want to add our new notes here to our fingering chart and I'm going to suggest that we might even add that one. Let's play them first. We're going to go C, B, A, B, C. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So notice we did the middle finger for our B. And that means that on our chart, we're going to colour in. They've shifted a bit. We're going to colour in all of the left hand finger holes that we were covering and the middle on the right so that it looks like that and then for the A we're going to colour in all of the left hand finger holes and two on the right and then we might add our B flat which is the note we've played where we added the first finger on the right and I'm now going to play C, B, A, G, A, B, C. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And colour in the, the G at the left hand end that has all six finger holes covered. This doesn't mean that we're expecting that you'll instantly know those notes forever. It's the first step of you getting to know what they look like as well as what they sound like and feel like. But notice that we began with what they sound like. So in your starter book, there is a page that's called Sound to Symbol. That's actually what we've been doing. So you'll notice the first song in it is called Rain is Falling Down and we've played that before. Let's have a quick play of Rain is Falling Down. <laughs> so now you're seeing what it looks like in notation. And it says underneath, Writing Practice. Now, some of you might choose to just practice writing the same notes that we had above there. So it might look slightly wobblier than the original printed version, but a bit like that. But if you're feeling comfortable with all of that, you know what you could do? We can make something up. So we could go... So what I did was C, C, D, D, E. And I'm, what I'm going to write is two Cs. I'm putting them on extra lines below the stave lines. And I'm putting stems on them and joining them at the back to make them eighth notes. And then I'm going to do that with the two Ds. And then I'm going to put an E half note. All right, and now I've run out of room but on that particular bit, but there's more writing practice space down below. Same with the frog song. I would encourage you to play the frog song. Let's play the frog song. you to write out perhaps part of the frog song just as it is but then make your own little variations and fun things with it and see how you go writing some of those down too if you're not that clear about the eighth notes and half notes and quarter notes don't worry about them just put dots because we can always sort it out as we go but if you but a, a trick is if they're notes that are closer together in time put them closer together even if you're just doing dots 
Notice how a half note always gets a little, little extra space on it. And that's deliberate to show us that it's a longer note. Okay, so sound to symbol. Have some fun with it.